Hey, everybody. Big New Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I am the Bear, Chris Felica, joined again by Jeff Schwartz. Another week of college football action coming up rapidly. Before we get to this week, I just want to touch on something that happened last week that may affect your handicap for this week. And you, as a player, I think that's probably the 842nd time since we started the podcast yes. that I referred to you as a, you as a player in the locker room. And there'll be more. Yes. Just don't, That's why I'm don't, here. Don't think I'm done yet. But last week, you look at the way Clemson lost. But the, the head coach butchered yeah. the end-of-game situation. You look at the way Colorado lost, never in the game, blowout, non-competitive. And you look at the way Notre Dame Oof, lost. That's the worst one of all. Go, gut-wrenching, <laughs> one second left. The coaches don't have enough, didn't put enough players in the field. Probably should have won the game. Like you spin it forward to... Yeah, The games this week, Clemson obviously is now at Syracuse, laying six and a half a team. It's given them problems in the past. Notre Dame is at Duke in a very another, another difficult yeah. game. And you got Colorado is not expected to be competitive against USC. But which of those three losses is, and you kind of said it already, A, the worst type of loss, and B, the you could say either the easiest type of loss yeah. to recover from or the more difficult, most difficult so, kind of loss to recover from. Like, like will any of these kind of lingering to this week, a week later when you said put on the field? My high school football coach gave me the best advice I've ever heard. It was, he said, would say to us all the time, don't lie to yourself, right? Don't lie to yourself. So it really depends on how each program and the players in the program kind of take in the loss, right? Like if you're Notre Dame right now, you say to yourselves, man, we gave a third and 19. We didn't have 10. We, we, we had 10 guys in the field for two straight Drop plays. Interception. Like we just had like these, these moments when guys, we should have won this game, right? Like if they're honest with themselves, they watch the film. They, they, it wasn't all perfect, but they, they can say to themselves. I think honestly, like guys, we, we just let one go. Like we, we, we were right there. We got to finish better. We know, we, we know we're good enough to compete with Ohio state. Let's go beat another top ranked team in Duke. I know game days there. Like all those things are there. Like we, we need to make amends for last weekend. If you're Colorado and this is, I don't know what the mindset of their, of their team is behind the scenes, right? Mm -hmm. Because forward facing, obviously they thought they were going to beat Oregon. Right. And, and of course, as and players should feel that way. I'm not yeah, yeah. knocking how they should feel. But if they truly evaluate where they are as a program after that game, then I think the loss against Oregon could motivate them to be better. But if they sort of lied to themselves about what they were through three weeks, a blowout loss like that to Oregon could lead to another blowout loss to USC, right? Like you have to, so it depends on how honest you are about where you are as a player as a coaching staff and as a program and the expectations you have for yourself. I think it's easier for Notre Dame to, to come back this weekend and just say, guys, man, it was like three plays, third and 19. We dropped interception. We had 10 guys in the field. Like we, if we had 11 guys in the field, we probably, they had 10 guys in the field and still almost stopped them. Yep. It was like a half yard short of, and they needed one yard. Um, if you're Colorado, you're like, man, like, I, I, what, what do you do? What do you do? And I think the thing about Colorado's loss too, we touched on this a little bit later in the group chat as well. Is like, it, the schematic things bothered me. Like it's not just the physical part of the game, but there was some schematic issues I saw in that game offensively that concerned me about the future. So again, that loss to me feels like, especially how high they were flying, like that could have the biggest effect. How, however, they're playing at home this weekend. Mm -hmm. The other teams are going back on the, or not back on the road, but they're going on the road. So um, I think Notre Dame is going to be fine. I, I think they're going to be fine. They know they're a good football team. The one to worry about is Colorado. Cause what happens now if USC goes in there and dominates them, like we think they could do this weekend, what's their psyche like after that game? So um, it, it's all about just, do you lie to yourself? Do you tell yourself the truth? Are you honest about your play? And I think Notre Dame is going to be fine after that loss. It, it, it's a loss where you watch them. You're like, man, come on, guy. Like we should have won this game. And they should have won the game. Five and a half point favorite at Duke right now. I'm not betting Notre Dame this weekend. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's a game I really want no part of because this, this, this gauntlet of games for Notre Dame, starting with that Ohio State game last week, Duke this week at Louisville next week, and then the SC game. Like it, 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 it's a it's a really difficult run. Uh, for the Irish, but you're right. If they, if they can get over that yeah. and basically just say, Hey, we have one loss. We win the rest of them. We're going to be in the playoff. That's 
still a lot to play for. The, the one thing I, I had a researcher here look up was about um, you know, the idea of like Colorado off a big loss. Do, do teams who get blown out like that come back the next weekend and play better? And the answer is really not really. I, it says 2017 teams to lose by 35 plus points in the regular season that were ranked are only five, five and and, and one against the spread the next weekend. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. so like, it, it's so like, yeah. So like, it's not really something where I thought like, Oh man, Colorado is going to bounce back. And I think they do actually play better this weekend, especially offensively. Um, but it's not something where like the automatically just come back the next weekend and play better. That's why Colorado to me is the one where I'm sort of more concerned about their psyche that I would be Notre Dame. It was one thing I forgot to look up. So you see, you said, look something up, but I wanted to look up before the pod and I totally ran out of time uh, yesterday to do it. I wanted to see how teams that going back since Nick Saban has been at Alabama, how many teams have played Alabama and LSU in consecutive weeks and what the result was uh, in those games. And those will be the second, no, because that's yeah. what all miss is in the situation yeah. of going to Alabama. Now they got a bunch of off the field stuff going on. And you got LSU this week, your short home dog. So I'll, I'll send that out in my, uh, in my bear bites uh, on Twitter and in the, uh, the column on foxsports.com. It'll, it'll be in there. I promise. I got, I got a nice long flight to Denver to look old. How does Clemson bounce back though? It's because Syracuse is like the place everyone right. goes to die. Like it's like a, just a tough place to play. And it's a team that a program that, you're not going to win the ACC. No, you're not going to go to the play. I got two ACC losses already. So you need basically a miracle. You're not going to like it's the first time in however many years. Like, I mean, even last year, as bad as things were, like you still had the ACC to play for and you wound up winning it. Like it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. It's, yeah. it's, I mean, I don't know that. And, and that, that being said, like, you should have won the game. A ridiculous play call. You outgain them. Or a non-offensive touchdown. But yeah. I'll be curious to see how, because they, they still have Miami on the schedule. They got South Carolina still on the schedule. That's- I feel very good about being very high on the, on the Hurricanes this season. I feel like my my uh, my excitement I, for them uh, has really paid we, off. We, we kind of touch on that in the, in the group chat, which we already, yeah. full disclosure, we, we, we <laughs> taped that before we start everything else. But, I wasn't sure what to think. I, I I thought this year would kind of be for Miami fans. Think back to the the nineteen ninety nine season when they they had that heart run, the, the gut wrenching loss to Penn State. And then they wound up losing a couple games to, to Florida State and Virginia Tech. But you knew like everything was there. Yeah, like ninety nine was like the building block for two thousand when it finally all came. That's what I kind of thought the season was going to be for Miami. Maybe it'll still turn out that way, but maybe maybe they're uh, further ahead of schedule than we might have thought. As a young UCLA Bruin fan, I will never forgive them for the 1998 loss in Miami in the Hurricane rescheduled game, where UCLA would have been at they would have gone to the BCS championship yep. game that season yep. if they had beaten Miami and that the game that got uh, re- rescheduled. And the Hurricanes beat them. Katie McNown they gave up like 30 points the second half. It was ridiculous. Edrin, they couldn't tackle Edwin James. Couldn't tackle Edwin. All right, let's get to your wagers for this week. Again, these are wagers that Bear is making because guys, uh, I don't know why anyone would fake wager on, on Indiana. We'll get to that one in a second here. Uh, let's start with your first bet for college football. Houston is getting nine points at Texas Tech. Houston is two and two. Uh, they beat Sam Houston State last weekend, 38 to seven. They're two and two against the spread as well. They covered in both their wins. Texas Tech is one and three. They lost to West Virginia last weekend, and they're without their starting quarterback. And Tyler Shuck, who's out for the season with a lower leg injury. Where are you going? Yeah, it, 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 it's, this is mostly eight and a half out there now. I did find a nine, so hopefully by the time uh, you're getting around to listening to this, it's still a nine out there. But uh, even at eight and a half, I would take Houston. You never ultimately know what you're going to get from a Danner Holgerson coach team. Sometimes uh, the effort can be lacking and things can go south like it did against TCU earlier this year. Key thing, though, Donovan Smith, the former Texas Tech quarterback, is now Houston's quarterback. And, and I just wonder, without Shuck, if, more, if, if Baron Morton or whomever is going to be under center for Tech can kind of get that offense going because they – They've been very disjointed at times. I, I, I do feel good that you're going to get a good effort from, from Houston here yeah. just because the circumstances of the game and Dana's connection to that place and, and that league. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the points here because I, I don't feel great about the direction yeah. of Tech's offense without, without Shuck at quarterback. 
so far the best thing Tech has done in offense was run the ball against Oregon with, with their quarterback. And now yeah. he's obviously like not in the game. Their offenses look kind of disjointed. And then defensively, they're really bad on first down. They they have one of the worst kind of third down percentages. Like they they they, they let their opponent have kind of the shortest third downs in the country, which isn't great against a Houston no. offense that I think is going to get better as the season goes on. And they and they don't create havoc with their defensive line. They're down a quarterback. I'm with you. It's a lot of points for a team who doesn't have a, a starting quarterback in the game. Let's get to your second bet. Right here, and this one, who, buddy? Uh, Indiana uh, is getting 14 and a half points at Maryland. Total is 50 and a half. Indiana is two and two. They just beat Akron. Who, what a game! I think it was 39, uh, excuse me, 31 29. They've covered in three of their four games, though. Maryland, four and oh, just beat Michigan State, who is uh, in some disarray right now. Maryland's covered half of their four games. Bear again, total is 50 and a half here. Where, where are you leaning? I hate myself for betting Indiana <laughs> in this game. Those, those of you who have been following me for a long time know that I had a running skit about losing the Indiana phone number and putting that putting that number on on, on block. However, we, we let one slip through a caller ID. Like, like they must have called me from a different number that, that I was able to take the call, answer it. And, and look, it's more of a play on the situation, I think, than yeah. anything else. With Maryland having the undefeated, looming the, with the undefeated showdown in Columbus next week against Ohio State. And if you want to nitpick a little bit, you look at the two wins Maryland just had. Virginia is the worst team in the ACC. Michigan State may wind up proving to be the worst team in the Big Ten. And they got nine turnovers in those, those two games. Yeah. So they were basically handed the game by just ineptness on the other side of the ball. And Indiana looked respectable against Ohio State. And, and they looked respectable against Louisville. So if they can just play with that type of, if they can play the way they did against Louisville and Ohio State, 14 and a half here and a potential look ahead spot for Maryland, I'll take Tom Allen and, and I, go, Indiana, Indiana, <laughs> Indiana, we're all for you. Oh, Indiana, Indiana, That's Indiana, nice we're all for you. Ah, you. How do you know their fight song? How do you know? Yeah. Indiana, Indiana, and I go back a long you way. Go back a long way. Yeah, I was. I did not expect to be serenaded today. That's one. That's that. one of my like m- many useless talents. I used to just like one of my one of the fun things I would do with our our group chat at my former employer was if would, there'd be a score. If I had a bet, if something was on the board, like and we were winning that bet, I would kind of like break out a couple of hymns of the fight song and like send a voice message. You didn't text me the Oregon fight song last weekend. No, I'm that. mad at Oregon. Oh, they didn't score enough points. For you. Over, how do you lose a four over 45 and a half team total yeah. in a game that's 35, nothing at halftime. Yeah. I had a best bet earlier this week, this year where there, I had a total of over like 60 and a half or something that had 52 points at halftime. It didn't get over. Like I, I it's, that's the worst part about, about uh wager here. The point you make though, there's a good point about like the look ahead spot. This happens a lot in college football, man. We're like, you have Maryland. They're going to have Ohio we, state next weekend. We'll see last week yeah. Like you, you're just going to have these moments when you just sort of have to fade the better team in Maryland right now. And this is, I was shocked when I said where they're 12th of points per drive on offense and 11th on defense. Like they're playing good football. It's not the mm-hmm. best competition, but this is a, spot where like if you're a player i've been in a situation before you look at the schedule and you absolutely do this in college football you do not in the nfl you look at the schedule and you're like oh okay indiana that's a win oh michigan state that's a win and you circle these games and you like oh ohio state's coming you know you put a star across that game like this is a game where i think maryland's going to overlook indiana i think you're on track here let's get to your third game right now Arkansas on the road against Texas A&M. Texas A&M is favored by in Arlington, six. In Arlington neutral site. Oh, Arlington neutral site. I'm sorry. Arlington neutral site. A&M is favored by six. Uh, total is 53 and a half. A&M is three and one. They just beat Auburn by 17 points. Outside of the Miami game, their defense has been really, really good. Reports are their starting quarterback, obviously, Connor Wegman, out for the season. Arkansas, two and two. They beat two group of five teams. They lost their last uh, two games against power five teams, including LSU and a close one last weekend. Where are you leaning? here i just even without wegman max johnson played well last week yeah. against auburn he sh- he's shown flashes at times th- that he can make plays and the combination of of the a&m defense and, and their ability to run like for the first time in a long time a&m is actually underrated like they, they've been Ooh. like they've been viewed as okay. this team and the moving in the last couple of years and like to be better than they actually were for the first time, they got a, a team that, because of all those disappointments or failures, however you want to phrase it, like they're kind of going unnoticed. And now I think people are just going to assume that they're going to take a step back without Wegman. 
I, I'd be careful here. I know this series has been close and you've had wild, ridiculous plays uh, to swing games. But I worry about Arkansas in this situation because a couple of weeks ago, twice you blew a double-digit lead at home yep. in a loss to BYU. Last week you had a, a physical game and a tight loss to, uh, to arguably your now your your biggest rival uh, in LSU. And now you got to take on a and and that defense and, and that running, like, I just don't like the situation. And, and I worry that I worry that Arkansas might not, they might need another week to kind of fill up the tank again and, and get ready to play a, a game against the quality of the opposition that, that, that a and is. So I'm going to, I'm going to lay the six. I, I realize I could be walking into a 31, yeah. 27 and M win, but, but I like, I like the Aggies and I like the deal because remember too, a and M has Alabama next week. Yeah. So, but so I'm I'm, I'm going to lay it and, and hope for the best. Arkansas has trouble generating explosive plays on offense, which is amazing with KJ Jefferson right. and Rocket Sanders. You would you would think that they wouldn't. And the important part about explosive plays is when you play a team like A and M and their defense, you can't go. 10, 11, 12 play drives. Like you're just not going to do that in a college offense. There's so many ways to make mistakes against a good defense in a 10 or 12 play drive. So you have to be able to score on these good defenses very quickly and kind of catch them by surprise. Cause again, you're not going to pickleball them down the field. And when you're a team like Arkansas that can't do that, you're not going to score. <laughs> Like, like that's the thing. You're just not going to score in this game unless a and maybe looks ahead or for some reason isn't playing as hard. But again, a neutral site game will have a different feel to this game as well. So I think A&M will be ready for this one. Let's get to the last one here. Um, Michigan at Nebraska. Nebraska is a 17 and a half point underdog at home. The total 39 and a half. Very low here. Michigan's 4-0. They've covered zero of their four games. They did push last weekend with a closing line against Rutgers. Nebraska's 2-2. Two two. They won their last two games against Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. And they have made a quarterback change, getting rid of, of Sims there and putting in, uh, I think it's Hageman? Is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, <clears throat> yeah Sims has uh, been hurt and Henrik Henry. Henrik Harburg is the Harburg, is the, that's what yeah, is. Okay, I'm sorry. Is the uh, is, is the Nebraska quarterback? But I just look Michigan. Obviously, and Georgia have not covered this year, but people have. We've, we've mentioned that. We'll discuss that uh, later as well. But this defense is still really good. Yeah, and it's a situation where the, the number of possessions in this game is not going to be very high. <laughs> Like Michigan is one of the slowest paced teams. Yep. I think there's on average they have like ten possessions a game. For, 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 for they average like ten possessions a game. So your your margin for error when you get when you get the ball, you need to do something with it. And I just don't think Nebraska is going to have a very high success rate against this Michigan defense. And say you're going to get nine drives maybe in the game, how many are they going to score? Like we, we look, we know we know Michigan's offense has not been great so far, but they've allowed what. 30 points, I think, this year. 23 total points this year in four games. Yeah. And I know it hasn't been necessarily great competition, but Nebraska, the best thing you can say about Nebraska is that with Harburg in the lineup now, the last couple of weeks with Sims being out with the injury, is they have not turned the ball over as much. I think turned over once yeah. the last two weeks. However, they played I, nobody. They played nobody, and they still only scored. What, 28, 20, I think. 20 last weekend. Yeah, yeah. so it's not, it's not like their offense is really humming. And to under 10 and a half team totals where I landed here with the Huskers, if they get two touchdowns, so be it. But <laughs> touchdown field goal yeah. seems about the ceiling for Nebraska here. I think sometimes in these low totals, I think I worry about a defensive score, but Michigan doesn't turn the ball over. Right. Like they're not going to score. They're not going to score Nebraska. They're not going to score special teams. Like efficient, yeah. safe passing game. So you're asking for Nebraska to basically drive the field twice in one of those drives. They score a touchdown. And then when obviously they get a field goal and you still cover that, like you need basically two touchdowns here, two or two or two point conversion. Yeah. Which, I mean, the game could be at a point where they don't even need that, which I guess is always, a, but like you have, that's a lot. I think to ask this offense. Okay. All right, so we'll get to our best bets later. We'll get to our Grambling group chat in just a second. Let's go over the wagers here that Bear has made so far. Again, these are wagers that only only Bear has taken. No, everyone everyone could bet these as well, <laughs> but Bear is doing these in real life. Houston getting nine points at Texas Tech. Indiana, the plus 14 and a half at Maryland. Arkansas and AM. It's a neutral site game in Arlington, as Bear mentioned, but he's taking AM minus six and a half here. And then Nebraska's team total under. 
10 and a half. That game is at home. They're hosting Michigan, who is a very good football team. Let's get to our gambling group chat now. We talk about the rest of the matchups, a Heisman discussion, a Spear discussion about uh, what are some teams where we, we, we might be sleeping on still through the first month of the season. It's going to be me, Bear, Sammy, and Will Hill. Here it is. Time for the best part of the Bear Bets podcast, the gambling group chat. Jeff and I joined by Sammy P. and Will Hill. And Sammy, I know that you've made some Heisman plays in the past. You got a, a great number, I believe, on Mike, Michael Penix. He's now co favored with Caleb Williams at around plus 350 or so to, uh, to to win the award. I don't think Williams is going to win. I know you got a great number, like I said, on Penix. What would you get on Penix, and do you still think he's worth the play at plus 350? I don't know about that, Bear. I hate to come on here and pass post, too, but I've been in this Washington bucket for a couple of weeks now, and Penix – was seven to one about two weeks ago. And now, you know, you could find a four to one in Vegas. If you shop around, if you have a buddy in Vegas, you could always, you know, get down that way, but he's the best player on what could be the most exciting team in the PAC 12. And, and we've talked about this, you know, everybody loves USC and there's a lot of love for Oregon and Utah looks really good. And Colorado finally fizzled out, but Washington is still sort of underrated as a team. And, you know, he's throwing for like 400 yards a game and, you know, their aerial attack is legit. Um, I think your point about Caleb Williams is is right on. We've only had one repeat Heisman winner ever, and that's Archie Griffin back in the mid-70s. So the voters have fatigue when it comes to giving it to the same guy back-to-back years. I think this Penix kid, I don't know how good he's going to be in the NFL, but he is clearly the most electric quarterback in the country right now in terms of throwing the ball deep and getting those big chunk plays. And every time he throws the ball, He's a threat to throw a touchdown. I think he's going to get like 5,000 yards, 45 touchdowns. And if that's the case, it's going to be hard to beat Michael Penix. Yeah, I know Jeff and I like Jordan Travis before the year. He's down to what, 12, 13 to 1. I mean, he hasn't looked great, but no team has a more impressive resume than, than Florida State with their two wins with LSU and then uh, at the road on the road against Clemson, which, uh, look, we, we talked about it last week. That was one of the most predictable things of the week is Dabo trust his kicker too much and, and botching the clock and (laughs) and giving that game away. So look, I I don't know that I see a great bet on the board right now. I think as these markets become more and more mainstream, they just shrink the numbers knowing we want to bet it. I'm curious what you guys think. If you had nothing in pocket right now, do you guys see like a great number right now? Because I don't know that I do. Yeah. I I don't know if I do. Like I'm looking down the board, like like Sam Hartman, if they would have beaten Ohio state last week, might've been a play. Uh, J.J. McCarthy, Michigan's offense hasn't been great. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, Miami, still undefeated. Cam Ward, I don't think anybody thinks Wazoo is going to go undefeated. So it, it it might be Quinn Ewers, or it could be maybe Dylan Gabriel, if, if the winner of that Red River game next week. It's funny because, Will, you touched on Jordan Travis. Like I was looking at updated season win totals yesterday. At DraftKings, Florida State's updated season win total is 11 and a half to the over. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It, 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 it's a, a, a 11 and a half plus 150 to, uh, on the over minus 185 on the under. So I don't know if that it's funny because there's a, I think there's going to be a, a dichotomy brewing here with the Knowles because they has got those two great wins, but you look at some of their advanced metrics and, I know Bill Conley does a great job with the SP plus like there are a lot of, a lot of indicators out there that kind of say Florida state isn't this great team, but Jeff, I know we were talking before we went on the air about Washington. Like, does it feel like this is like the worst time to buy in on Washington? And like, this is as good as Washington might be because their schedule is really backloaded. I think for any of the PAC 12 quarterbacks, all the schedules are backloaded, right? I mean, a lot of the Pac-12 teams have played well so far, but haven't really played anyone. They all play each other, right? I mean, Washington's going to play USC, Oregon, Utah, Washington State, Oregon State. Oregon still has to play all those teams as well. And so if you're looking for a Pac-12 quarterback, now's, the, I think, the worst, not the worst price, but you're not going to get it, you know, if you wait to take Penix after they play Oregon, after some of these games, you might get a better price, right? Because they might lose some of these games. Washington right now, guys, is playing the best they're going to play all season. Like their schedule, they have yet to play a team, and they will play Arizona this weekend that has a power five win. Arizona has one. They have a one point win against Stanford. Like they haven't played anybody yet. Oregon really hasn't much either, right? And so I think a lot of these these Pac-12 programs, we're going to find out what the quarterbacks are made of the next couple of weeks. And, and plus 350 for Penix when you could have gotten him at plus 700. I, that to me is not the best wager at the moment because we're going to find out what these quarterbacks are over the next six weeks. And anyway, we talked about. Let's take a look here. Can we go? Winner. 
going to say, if we go East, I know, you know, we talk a lot about the PAC 12 and how great the PAC 12 is, but if you want to go East and I think one of us brought this up, you know, two weeks ago about Miami and I'm not going to get crazy and say Miami's a top five team in the country or, or a top 10 team. I do think they're a top 10 team, but if they can go on the road and beat Florida state on November 11th, there's a chance they can go 11 and one this year. And if that's the case, you know, you can get a good number on a guy like Van Dyke at 30 or 35 to one. This team is outstanding on defense, which nobody talks about very good in the trenches on the defensive line. Mario has clearly turned this program over in terms of talent. If Miami goes 11 and one and wins the ACC, Van Dyke is going to get some love. And there's a guy that's sort of in the middle of the pack right now in terms of a number. Is he going to win it? I don't know. But if you want to grab a good number, 30 or 35 to one on Tyler Van Dyke is not bad by any stretch. You know, I, I would agree with you on, on that, Sam, because I think if you look at two years ago, he had a great freshman year in that offense. He was putting up numbers when he finally took over his starter that I went back and looked. I forget exactly what the criteria were, but like what he produced was like equated by only Joe Burrow in his Heisman winning campaign during in like the playoff era. So he's clearly got the ability. I think Shannon Dawson really trusts him uh, to make big plays. It was a great story by, by Bruce Feldman on, on Fox sports on athletic actually, but uh, Fox is Bruce Feldman who wrote that story about how Shannon Dawson just trusts him to make the right call, ran verts and went and went for the win uh, against a and instead of basically running out the clock. So he's got a lot of trust and you're right. Uh, they got a game, obviously in North Carolina, we haven't even mentioned Drake may uh, as well as a guy who, potentially could win this award. I don't know if anybody really thinks uh, the Tar Heels are going to be a factor and he's going to put up big enough numbers, but that's kind of, I don't want to say a Heisman elimination game, but North Carolina has kind of been Miami's bugaboo the last few years. So if they can get that win over the Tar Heels, that certainly would uh, bode well for his long-term candidacy. So I mentioned last year's winner, Caleb Williams, they got the road game at Colorado. The, the, the bubble finally burst on the, uh, the, the Colorado undefeated season last week. Now you're a massive underdog. You're probably not going to have Travis Hunter. You're probably not going to have Shallow Sanders. And you got an SEC, an SEC team that might go into Boulder and, and, and put up 56 or so. Will, do you have any uh, any thoughts or any plays or any angle here on, on this game or Colorado in general moving forward? Well, I, I, you just can't lay that many points with USC. And I, and I thought last week, I mean, for them to be, what, a five-touchdown favorite, even against Arizona State, like they can just never get control of the game with that defense. They're always going to give up, you know, their 17, 21-plus points. And that's just that's asking a lot to, for them to cover these big numbers when you're that bad on defense. Eventually, you got to get some stops and put the game away. So uh, it would be Colorado or pass for me uh, on this one. Nothing I bet, but I just I can't lay this number with USC. Sammy P, I, I know you, you, we've been pretty vocal about Colorado probably not as good as what the record is, and they yeah they put up points, but eventually lack of depth and once the quality of competition improves, but we're we're, we're going to see them pick up some losses. And last week it finally happened. But but as Will said, like this is a big number. Is there maybe a little bit of a too much of an overreaction the other way this week? Like okay, the the end is near. Colorado's never going to win another game now. But it does seem like a lot of points this week, doesn't it? Well, let's also remember, Bear, where the number opened. In Vegas, it opened 27, and that lasted for about three and a half seconds. Bam, 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 and now we're down to like 21, 21 and a half. I can tell you this is the first week we've seen sharp money on Colorado. The Sharps, remember, have been betting against Colorado for the last month because bookmakers haven't been high on this team. This is the first week we've seen money on Dion's club. And I'll tell you what, I look at this total at 73 and a half. After Colorado barely scores last week, that number tells me Colorado's going to move the ball in this game. And we know Jeff Oregon's got a really good defense. They got NFL guys all over the field on that side of the ball. USC has potential to be good, but their technique is bad. They still can't freaking tackle, which blows my mind that USC can't tackle. I think this is a game where USC could score 50, but Colorado's going to move the ball with Sean Lewis, the OC. They're going to get guys in space. They're going to make guys miss. I like over 73 and a half here. And obviously, you know, taking 21 and a half when you could have taken 24 or 27 is not Hard ideal. I like the over, though. I think both teams are going to score in this one. 
So I played USC over 40 and a half points. Um, I just don't see a world where Colorado stops them defensively unless USC comes out sluggish. They're playing a nine Pacific body clock, right? They're on the road for the second straight week. They're in the altitude. So maybe there's an issue there where they start slower and Colorado is able to slow them down just because USC has a slow start. But they also didn't play a crisp game against Arizona State. So I, I don't really think USC can be stopped in this game. The hardest part I have about picking Colorado to cover this game, and I, and I did like the number originally, I have not wagered on it, is is I agree with the premise that their offense will be better this week because they can't be worse than last week, but also USC's back end of their secondary besides Bullock can't tackle and their linebackers are struggling. But I was really alarmed at just like the basic protection issues they had against Oregon. And we know USC, what, what do they do? They blitz every single play. They move every play. And I just, I concerned about Colorado's ability to generate offense if they don't fix some of the protect, not just the one-on-one -on -one battles, but just like the scheme things. Oregon was able to out-scheme them a lot. And I just am very concerned about Colorado's offense being able to get the ball out, get it in rhythm with the defensive line of USC that is their best thing, the, the, the best thing they do on defense. So I think Colorado does play better. But, you know, this game could be 56-21 and USC easily covers. So I'm staying away from the side in this game. Yeah, I, I think your, your your USC team total is probably going to be the way that I uh, make a make a wager on this one. I think that's probably the, the safest thing I think any of us, what we just talked about, is that USC is going to score points. So it, it's interesting because we kicked around USC, kicked around Washington. Like, I was just doing, doing some thinking on Sunday night when I kind of formulate my ideas for, for Big Noon kickoff. And just I was I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, what if we, we, meaning, we meaning the general we is the, the, the public, the college football fans, nation, writers, media, whomever, like what if we have it all wrong? Like most people think SC or Washington is the best team in the Pac-12. What if it's really Oregon? Like most people think Michigan's the best team in the Big Ten. What, what if it's really Penn State? Most think Florida State's the best team in the ACC, like Will and I were just talking like, mentioned, like what if it's Miami? Like most people think Texas is the, be the best team in, in the Big 12, like what 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 if it's really Oklahoma? Like, I think most people think Georgia's the best team in the SEC, and they probably are. But you, you go down and you look at some of these conferences. Like, is there an opportunity anywhere to maybe get a good price on a team, either to make the playoff or win the league or even win the win the title? That we just might be overlooking someone, and the price just might not have caught up with any of these teams yet. So like, like I have Oklahoma tickets to, to, to make the playoff and, and, and win the title. So I, I got a, a good number on that. So I, I don't know. Will, do you, do you see anything out there? Somebody like Penn State's defense is really good in the Big Ten. And that's not like the Michigan offense has been blowing people out and, and look great by any means. That's the one. That's the one I've been talking about. And you mentioned it like it's so wide open. It feels more like March Madness in college basketball than it does college football, where it's always so top heavy. It's always, you know, you could pick out of two or three teams this year. It's more eight, 10 teams. And uh, not only is Penn State really good, they finally have a quarterback. I, I don't know that I trust the coach. I, I don't think I do. But like you, you mentioned, Michigan, they're good. I don't know if they're great. And Ohio State, even though that's an impressive win, I was not impressed with the quarterback. They really stole that game. Let's be honest. Notre Dame gave that game away. And I don't know if we'll get to uh to Notre Dame Duke here in a little bit. But I, I thought Ohio State gave it away. Or, or Notre Dame gave away more than Ohio State took it. So I think there's an opportunity for Penn State. You know, you, you mentioned Oregon. That's a really good team. I, I think Penn State has a better path than these teams in the, uh, you know, in the Pac-12, just because they don't have to play as many good teams. So for me, it'd be Penn State still around, what, 15, 16 to 1 to uh, to win the whole thing, I think is a good bet. Hypothetically, obviously, because like uh, like you, Bear, I, I live in Connecticut and we can't bet any of this stuff. Heisman, playoffs, yeah. national championship. It's uh, it's just so, it's, it's really, I, I don't get why that is, especially in past years we've been able to, but to me, it'd be Penn State. Okay, all right, you mentioned it, and I'm going to say it now because I have, three friends here and three degenerates. So back in March or April, at some point you were able to bet this in Connecticut. And I yep. did. <laughs> and I had tickets on Oklahoma. I, I, at like 60 or 65 to one. I bet Texas at 25 or 30 to one. And the other day, two weeks ago, actually, I should say, I was going back through my, my lot. It was at sugar house and, and in Connecticut, one of the three books you can bet at in Connecticut, sugar house, DraftKings, FanDuel. And I was actually going through and I was looking to see, I knew I had Garrett Cole to win the Cy Young and I wanted to see, see what number I got at him. I think it was plus 850, so I was happy with that. But as I was scrolling through, I didn't see my Oklahoma and Texas to win the title tickets. And I'm like, what the hell? And then it dawned on me. I'm like, holy crap. 
I'm like, they, the state of Connecticut made them take all these markets off the board. These bets are gone. And then I look, I'm looking, I'm like, I don't see a refund. I don't see a void. I don't see a credit. I see nothing. So I connect with the sugar house rep. It was, it was Mary R or Mary L. So we were going back and forth for a while. And she's like, oh, they'll be in your avoided bets tab. Well, I don't have avoided bets tab. I have active, settled. That, that's what right. I have. Open or set up. Nothing's there. So I, I'm like, well, why weren't these refunded? Well, we, we, don't, have to, we don't have to let. I'm like, all I, all I needed you to do was just let me know the bets were avoided. You've gotten your stake back. Your money's back. You're good. But not, it's funny because at FanDuel, this has actually happened before where there was either an egregious error or something put up. And FanDuel would send you an email saying your account has been affected by a market change. Please log in and you'll see your – this didn't happen with Sugar House in Connecticut. So I, I, I was in Australia for a month. I had no idea what was going on with my wagering in Connecticut. So I, I, fin- I finally get to a contact who is a buddy of mine in Connecticut, and he's going back and forth with Sugar House and I'll be Rush Street and can be like looking for these bets that I made five, six months ago now, which seemingly don't exist anywhere. So <laughs> Sugar House, get your, you know what together. All I want is my money back. All I want is to be able to bet the money that I bet on Oklahoma and Texas to win the national title. And I'm happy. So I apologize for taking over this podcast. It does say bear bet. So <laughs> I am bear. I can kind of take it in any direction that I want, but I was just livid when I got was, and, and by the way, they've gone like radio silent on my buddy who's reached out to the 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 Rustry people. So I'm, I'm I needed to use my platform here to uh, to get your money back. Bit, so I apologize. I like it, it man. It'd be nice if us, out. you know, get your money back. It'd be nice if us, us as betters, we had the magic wand and we could just make bad bets disappear. Hey, I bet this and it's not looking good. Let me just make it disappear. It'd be nice if it worked both ways, wouldn't it? The irony too there is we, that Mother we, Mary couldn't save you. I mean, Mother Mary is supposed to be the one that makes everything okay, and Mother Mary didn't come through. <laughs> I mean, I mean I, yeah, Will, you're right. I think you know, I don't, I don't like that Marlins to miss the playoff bet anymore. I, I, I can just go away, right? Like, and anyway, we'll go. Let's, let's get, let's get back to. I'm not as confident in Jets making about, the Super Bowl we, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my, my Aaron Rodgers to win the MVP. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I just don't like the way the year has gone for him. Let, let, let's eliminate that. Un- the, cr- the crap that they refund bets for, and I can't, oh, and, I, and I have no record of a bet that I made that was voided because the state of Connecticut took the market off the board. So, uh, I, I know, was, I knew, I knew I wasn't going to be able to get through today without mentioning it. So, will you open the door? I appreciate you for for doing that. Is, is there anyone? It, well, I'm not even. Why should we bet on Oregon to win the Pac-12, Jeff? Well, they're, they're the <laughs> most talented team in, in the conference. Uh, but I think, look, I think that the play that could be made is after Friday night. I think Utah's going to lose Friday night. They're not going to have so, Cam Rising, is my guess. I think taking them, it's plus 600 now. It probably will jump up a little bit after this game. Like Utah has the best defense in the conference. They're going to get an excellent quarterback back. Like for me, Utah at that price, what will it be? Plus 700, plus 800 after they lose to the Beavers. That's a great number for them. Like Utah to me is still, I, I have them still picked to, to win the Pac-12. I'm going to keep that on until I get proven otherwise. And because they win in the trenches, man. Their offensive line is struggling a tiny bit, but they win in the trenches. That to me is the winner of the Pac-12 conference. Whoever can win the trenches and play some defense, which Oregon can do as well, by the way. Here's the issue. Is Utah. Here's the issue, Jeff. Schedule sucks. At SC, at Washington. home Oregon the following week, then at Washington. But, and at, but everyone has that stretch, though. Like, that's the thing in this conference. Like, everyone, like, Oregon has a Washington, Wazoo, Utah stretch. USC has that six-game stretch where they're like, it's everyone. There's not an easy play in the Pac-12 because of, of the schedule. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> Sammy, any, anything out there, Sammy, that you like in terms of conference or, or title or anything along those lines? Yeah, I just pulled up the odds at Circa. I mean, in the ACC, Florida State is minus 135, which I, I guess makes sense. But then when you go down to Miami, Miami's 7-1. to one. In no world in my brain should Florida State be minus 130, Agreed. minus 135, and Miami should be 7-1. to one. I mean, when those two teams play next month or, or later in November, that, that money line price is not going to be, you know, 4-5 to 1. So I look at Miami at that price and think, look, let me just pop. I get this seven to one right now, and then I can reevaluate what I'm going to do mm-hmm. on November 9th or 10th, heading into the game against Florida State when they have to go to Tallahassee. Um, but let me let me tip my cap to Will because he's been talking about Penn State for three weeks now. I mean, in that yeah. conference, 
it's as wide open as it's been because I don't think Kyle McCord is anything special. And J.J. McCarthy's a nice player. He's not a game breaker, though, at this level. So I think this Penn State thing that Will has been on, Will has been basically driving the train for three weeks on them. If you miss the number, you can still get a deep one because of the Ohio State and Michigan love that never goes away. Um, but if, if you don't have Penn State and you're not in that caboose, uh, I would look at Miami 7-1 and to win the ACC because I think they're going to be in the title game. So are you guys picking Penn State to go to Ohio State in a couple weekends and win that game with a freshman quarterback sort of playing his biggest game of his life on the road? Because that obviously matters toward this wager, right? Like, is that something you're willing to pick now as an upset or that's or you're saying Penn it State? It might not, Jeff. Anyways. It might, basically, they may just need to beat Michigan in I, State I, College I to, to get to the Big Ten title championship game. Right, it's possible, but like, but you have to think that they're good enough to beat Ohio State on the road, right? Like that's as part yes, of the way. Yes, I, I think they are. Okay, I think I think that defense travels. I think the offensive line is is a, a vastly improved from oh, the, the left what, tackle is the best. What, in the country. what Penn State yeah. had in previous years, and and the running backs that they have are freaks. Well, I, I, I'm just asking because that that obviously has to be part of the equation with a freshman on the road. We just saw Dante Moore play as a freshman on the road at Utah. Like it's hard to play that good first prop, good 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 call on that it, by the way. It's hard to play, play that first six. that first big like conference game as a freshman quarterback on the road. Like it just it just is. And and I I like Penn State a lot, but I I could also see them going there and just having that freshman oopsie game where you just like have a turnover, have some bad plays and don't win that game then you're forced to basically beat Michigan at home to 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 make the conference championship game, which obviously will be a tough a tough road. I'm just looking down the uh, the slate for this week. We had nine ranked teams on the road against unranked opponents. You got Florida at Kentucky. Kentucky's actually favored uh, in the game. What? I'm just I'm just looking here. In Michigan, Nebraska, seemingly seemingly interesting in terms of maybe the total. It's like thirty nine and a half. Georgia, Georgia <laughs> Auburn again, interesting. Just in terms of is Auburn ever going to score? Any. Missouri, Missouri Vandy for some reason feels very tricky. Like th- this kind of feels like a like a Vandy or pass. I know Sam, you, Sammy, you and I love these kind of uh, bad teams and disgusting looking underdogs. Can you get behind the old Commodores this week? 13, no, 13 I think, at home there, against Missouri. No, 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 no. I'll give you an ugly side, though. And I know a buddy who played this team to win the game outright, not to misdirect you. But I, I think we're all going to be fading Tennessee in my crew. Um, not that I have a big crew by any stretch of the imagination, but South Carolina is going to be. Yes, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. I'll, <laughs> I'll say it for you. You do have a big crew. I know your crew. We're you guys South do very Carolina. well. And we took we took some money line as well. I know they have some issues on the offensive line, but when you think about Tennessee as a stock, remember Tennessee coming in the last season, and you have to think about these things. Tennessee coming in the last season opened on the win total at seven. They got bet up to seven and a half, juice to the over, like minus 170, and they flew over that win total. They end up winning a big bowl game and all that jazz. But they have lost so much talent from last year to this year. And, and coming into this season, boys and girls, they were one of the most overrated teams in the country. Is Joe Milton going to play? Do we know that? There are a lot of question marks That's with Tennessee. Question. And I, I, in no world, am I laying 12 with the Vols here. We love 137 South Carolina. It took 12. And I know some guys that took a piece of the money line at 4-1. to one. And it, obviously, it is a big revenge spot for what happened in Columbia last year. I was, it was the most shocking result of last year, what South Carolina did to Tennessee. Well, I, I mentioned Michigan. I mentioned Georgia, top two teams in the poll. Neither of them have covered a spread this year. Do you think there ultimately might be a time where it's time to maybe get on Michigan or get on Georgia because maybe the numbers have come down? I mean, there is I have seen a little bit of Action on Nebraska. I know Paul Stone. I heard him earlier in the week. He like does like Nebraska this week. So, will you think there's a is is there a bet on Michigan or Georgia this week, or is there something else out there that you that you might like? I didn't play either game. I'd probably play the dogs in, in each of them. Georgia's just been sleepwalking through these games. I feel like Freeze at some point is going to turn it around with Auburn. So, I, I'm not laying the points in either one. It'd be dogs or pass. How about this one for an ugly one though? <laughs> I, if you've watched Illinois, look, regression was sort of predictable with the turnovers and the talent they lost. If you're Illinois, you can't lose three of the top 65, 70 players in the draft and replenish. It's just not that type of program. 
They are tough to watch. They're getting a point at Purdue. I, I like Purdue here. I think Purdue beats them again. You can bet oh, it. You, don't have to oh, watch you it, didn't just me, you didn't say that them. word. PU. You didn't say Purdue. That's a bad it's a curse word on this pod. PU. <laughs> can I give one ugly game? If we're, if we're doing ugly games. Yes. Why is Cal a 12 and a half point favor over anyone in the country right now? It's a good question. Arizona State's on the road. I get Arizona State has a ton of injuries. They're not, Drew Pine's not playing. Borgay's going to play quarterbacks, another quarterback switch, but their offense was much better with Kenny Dillingham last weekend. I, I don't get Cal. Why should Cal's not earn the right to be a 12 and a half point favor over anybody? Speaking of 12 and a half point favorites over anybody, you want ugly. Any Anyone want to take dead team walking Michigan State? No, twelve and a half point dog against at Iowa. They, they they've scored what since since Mel Tucker's yeah. left they scored what seven points like like, like I I, points? I honestly was looking points? I was looking to see if anybody would post like a an updated adjusted season win total two and a half because there's a legit chance I don't think they win another game this year that like when the, when that program goes south they go all the way south so. I did mention an ugly side I liked in, in in the opening segment. You guys want to make fun of me for betting uh, Indiana, getting 14 and a half against Maryland? Anybody out there? Will I will say no. You want to laugh at I, me? I know you bet under five and a half Michigan State. Check your account. Make sure it's still in there. Make, make sure nobody took the magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well played. On that note. We're going to let you go. We look forward to do it again uh, next week. Sammy, Will, the comedian, as always. Appreciate you. Have a great weekend, guys. I appreciate it. That Will, that Will Hill is such a comedian. He, he, <laughs> but, that, but that's the stuff we text him. I, 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 hit, I did not expect to come on here and go on a soliloquy about Sugar House voiding bets and now they're no longer existing. Let me just let be clear. Like, they were like, like, you get like point of cruels and bonus bets. Yeah. So these were all like bonus bets that I made because I really can't bet like real money at Sugar House anymore. I'm like, I'm a 10 percenter there. So like, I basically do enough to accrue these bonus bets. So I had like a $250 bonus bet on Oklahoma, like a couple of $250 bonus bets on Oklahoma at 60, 65 to one, like a couple on Texas at 25. To, so that's the money I'm looking for. It's that wasn't actual physical money. It was, it was the value. So I just want to be able to get my bonus bets back and bet. Give Bear else. back his money. Give him his I money. I want my bonus bets back. Give damn it. Money, Cause Oklahoma bets really good. Oh. I, I didn't understand the, the preseason narrative about Oklahoma this year that, Brett Venables somehow forgot to coach because last year was bad on defense. He got better players this year. Like that was right. his first year. You know, I, I just don't, I, I don't understand the panic that sets in after one season. Like so sometimes it, it takes, and most often the second season is when a coach pops, right? Like mm -hmm. Oklahoma, I think is in a very good position right now. They're better <laughs> offensively and they're good on defense. They've allowed, they've allowed what 40 points this year, maybe less than that. If you go back, I'm just thinking back now. Like that happened like at the turn it, in the early part of the 2000s. Like it was Trestle's second season, I think, at Ohio State, where they wound up beating Miami. In, 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 yeah, it was, it, it was Pete Carroll's second, second year, year where they finally made that step. So you're right. A and lot also, of times. It was Urban. It did it both at Florida and Ohio State in the second season. So that's kind of like Saban at Alabama. Second, like that's always kind of the yeah. second season thing. And we saw, and now with the transfer portal, you just get better players. Like you can do it even almost quicker now. We're seeing it quicker, you know, in year one happens some places too. So funny you said that because one of the other things that I, I, I talked about, like in, in the group chat about the whole. What if we have it wrong? One of the things I wrote, and again, I don't know what the story is, the angle is, or how it would translate to television. It might be a good written story. Maybe yeah. someone else, someone else, someone want to go out here and plagiarize my idea. Go, go for it and do it. But like the narrative, like all oh, these coaches, you need three or four years to turn around a program. Look at Florida State. They knew Willie Taggart wasn't going to work. It was yeah. a disaster out quick yeah. look at colorado you knew it wasn't going to work let's make a bold hire with dion and it, you, they, they people yeah. are now talking about i mean talking about talking about colorado and there was one well, and, and, and washington well, usc which, too. washington with jimmy lake like you knew there were things off the off the field yeah, there, well, but they were also but, bad on the field but you and, and you knew it wasn't going to work and now you got florida state and Washington yeah. as national title contenders, and you got Colorado being the talk of the early part of the college football season. So, like this narrative about give a coach three or four years, uh, uh that's gone. With the portal, you can make changes yeah. quick, and you can tell early on whether it's going to work. And I'm not saying always it, yes. every one or two years get get rid of someone, but if the plan isn't clearly moving Correct. forward, you you have an idea whether you made a bad hire or a good hire, and if this is going to work. So. 
Don't be afraid to make that move. You can wind up like Florida State and Washington right now being yes. the top, top eight of the poll and amongst national title contenders. The only pushback I have on this idea of like building through the portal is you still need the base of your offensive defensive lines to be high school recruiting. And so it's easy to get those skill guys, in my opinion. We've seen that now throughout. But look at like Lincoln Riley's offensive line last year was mostly guys they had at USC already. They had the, the leading sack getter in all the country last season. Look at what Washington has in the offensive defensive line. These guys that were already there. Like Mario's it's, brought in three, right? Three offensive yes. linemen. Like it, like like you you the portal I think is good to supplement. Like Oregon has a right tackle that was really good from from Rhode Island. But if you're getting like a college power, football hotbed, Rhode yes. Island. If you're getting a call, a, an offensive lineman or defensive lineman, in my opinion, from power five to power five, there's a reason why they're not the school they're at. Like if they're if they're that good, they're most often going to stay at the school they're at because they're playing. Like their right. playing time is there, and so what? So I think you can get supplement that every now and then. But you know, if you're Dion, if you're so if you're you know if you're a, a, another place and trying to go through the portal quickly, you can do that to win early. But I think to sustain the success, you got to get back to that core of, of of like high school offensive defense alignment. That's, that, that's like made my portal take for a couple of years now. So we've seen it through college football. Let's recap Bears bets. So far, we get into his best bet of the show. Uh, Bear has Houston plus nine on the road at Texas Tech. Indiana plus 14 and a half at Maryland. Texas A&M neutral site favored by six against Arkansas. And then Nebraska's team total under 10 and a half against Michigan. Bear, what is your best bet? Me and you, by the way, two and two in college football last week. Two and two best bets in the NFL show. Let's keep it going. Two of two, right? Two and oh. Yeah, two, yeah. two for two. Oh, two for two. Two for two, yeah. I, 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 I miss so, did, did, did I say two and two? I thought it was two for two. I thought you said, I thought you said two and two. Maybe no, we, two, maybe two and two on the year now. But we, we were two for we were two for two. Two last for two, week. yes. Two Perfect. for two last oh, week. Two bang. for two in NFL. Excellent. A, well, a, a, a welcome, successful yes. week. I'm going to go the Auburn team total under 15 and a half. Like I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take for you, Freeze, to get this Auburn offense turned around. If, if you go back since beating Georgia to end of the 2007 reg, 2017 regular season. And Georgia wound up beating them in the uh, SEC title game to go to the college football playoff. Auburn has scored 10, 10, 6, 14, 10, and 7 in those games. Wow. It doesn't matter who the coach is. doesn't matter who quarterback is. It all kind of coincides with Georgia's rise as the premier college football program right now. And if you look at the two games against Power 5 opponents this year for, for Auburn, 14 points in a win against Cal with 230 yards, <laughs> 10 points and 200 yards last week yeah. uh, at a and 3.6 yards per play in those two games. Like, if they, if they happen to score 16, 17 points, fine. Maybe you get maybe you get a pick six. Maybe you get an offensive score like they did last week against, uh, against A&M. But, like. But they did that and still got 10 last weekend. Correct. They had zero, <laughs> zero chance of scoring offensive touchdowns. So, I think they have major quarterback problems. You know, Auburn under 15 and a half points. I like it. I like these team total unders. It's a good, I think it's a good place to be. It's a, it's a market people that's don't not, yes, bet them. That's yes. It's a market I think a lot, not a lot of people look at and team total under. I'm going to go with my best bet is just a straight under in the Friday night game in the Pac-12 between Utah and Oregon State. And look, Utah can't keep winning with a four string quarterback. Like they're going to, they're going to lose this game, but I have enough respect for them that I'm not going to lay the three and a half with, with Oregon state. Like I'm just not going to do that. So I look toward the under here, Utah's offense right now, again, Nate Johnson, they scored what 26 points against Florida, 20 against Baylor, and then seven offensive points against UCLA. It's kind of gotten tiered down worse each and every week. They have less points per drive right now than Iowa does on offense. That's that is, that's an they, incredible. They, no, they, no. they just can't score. And it makes sense. It's not a knock on what Utah's at, but they're playing right. with a four string quarterback with an offensive line that's young and not playing terribly well. Now they're on the road against an Oregon state defense that did not play well against Washington state, but I, they, almost, I almost took Oregon state, here. but they didn't play well because they passed the ball. Utah can't pass the ball. Right. Oregon state can stop throwing on the flip side. Utah's defense is remarkable. They're so good against the run. Oregon State will not be able to move the ball. DJU will, will throw some errors. He has not been very good right. the last couple of weeks. And so the under here at 44 and a half is, is, is my play. Utah's going to lose this game. They're going to lose the game. They can't keep getting away with, they cannot have their fourth power five win with a four string quarterback, but I have enough respect. I, I just can't lay three and a half with the Beavers against a Kyle Whittingham coach team. So we, we like under 44 and a half as opposed to what's the Utah team total? Utah I don't know team what the team total, total is. is, but they but they score on defense though. That's the problem. What? 
I'm not going to tell you what it is. What what would you say is probably a prime score for this game? Oh, like a, like a 2014 game? Utah's team total is 20 and a half. Oh, yeah, you have to take the under in that, I think. Yeah, I would take the under that, too. But, again, the, the, they've scored on defense this year. Like, well, that's what they, they do. You they, speak like, defense they, can, they can make that happen. That's why I like the, the – just for the, the – both teams, they're going to run the football. It's a short week. Mm-hmm. Like, this feels defense to me. It's a low number. Utah's got under, by the way, in four of their four games so far this year by ease, like with ease. It was it was 14-7 last weekend, so – That was I'm an the unbelievable under. defensive performance last week. Yeah. And, and you, you kind of alluded to it earlier in, the, in the, on this show about how yeah. – Freshman quarterback going to Salt Lake, first play of the game, pick six. Yeah, pick six. That's why when I want to talk about Penn State in the gambling group chat. Like, I think we a little underestimate how tough that is for for a freshman quarterback to go in that situation. But uh, that, those are our wages for the week, Bear. Hopefully, we'll uh, have some more success. We finally we're, we're, we're trending up. Yes. I mean, make sure make sure you you check out that column as well on uh, FoxSports.com. I'll throw the bear bites in there with the the nuggets and the and the numbers that I find interesting. I throw a couple more plays in there come maybe Friday or so. But that's all we got right now for this week. Big New Kickoff presents Bear Bets, another one in the book. For Jeff, for Will, for Sammy, I'm Bear. The less you bet, the more you lose when you win.